Bump. What's going on, everybody? We're here. We're live. Welcome to a brand new Poker Live podcast. We're back on the podcasting grind. Pretty hardcore, guys. We got two a week coming until World Series of Poker comes, and then I'm probably never going to do a podcast again like I normally do every summer. But uh, yeah, coming up, guys, we have we have the legend Gus Hansen. He's going to be joining us. I just talked to him yesterday uh, during one of his sessions. I don't know when it's going to go down. I don't know if it'd be live, but me and Gus will be podcasting together. And obviously, that's a long time coming in the making. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to be having on this, so this crazy guy. He streamed 125 days in a row on Twitch, Arlie Shaban. He was on Big Brother Canada. He's he's really just started playing poker, but he's been so many hours. Like I said, 125 days straight. He's had really good results. He's a guy I got to know. So I really want to have him on, kind of talk more about why he's so insane and why he had 700 bottles of water in his room. So That'll be tomorrow. And then apparently also last night, I gave away a trip to Vegas on my Instagram. I, I don't remember actually doing this, but they told me I went back and checked my video. So I don't I have to figure out how I'm gonna give away a trip to Vegas. I, I don't know what the trip's gonna be. Maybe I'll have Sam here from Poker Central. Maybe he can he will show you the poker after dark set. I don't really know what's gonna happen with that, but stay tuned for more on that. But yeah, guys, joining me today is a young man who I've wanted to have him on the podcast for a while because he's been doing a lot of really good stuff over at Poker Central and with Poker Go. And uh, he's a guy that I really like. And I think that people out there should get to know more about him and, and kind of get to know exactly where he's coming from and his mindset when it comes to the decisions that are going on at Poker Central with the content and with the future of, of really of the poker content and a lot of the, the really good stuff that's being put out. So we're joined by... I'm flattered you like me, Poppy. What do you say? I said, I'm flattered you like me. I, you snuck that in there. I appreciate that. Well, no, that was, that was a very nice intro. Thanks for having me on. Vice, we I'm not even fin vice president of content. I, I, I'm always like, don't forget the title, it's very, very sexy title. Is there a president of content? Did I who's the president? Of content? There's no president of content, actually. It's uh, it's yeah, it's um, it's there, there may be at some point though. If there's a vice, there's got to be a president, one would think. Yeah, I was uh, when I was going, I was like, wait, who's the president? Have I met the president? <laughs> like, do I know the like who is who is the president? I, yeah, got, corporate, I don't know. Corporate, corporate titles are weird. We just we just kind of go along with the go with the flow. So you've been do you, you've been with Poker Central since since it started, right? So that was what like a two, year and a half, maybe ago, something yeah, like that. No, so so as many people know, Poker Central began uh, a while ago, a few years ago. Uh -huh. uh, I think it was October 2015 as the 24 seven network, and obviously that evolved and uh, pivoted into the Poker Go subscription VOD model. <clears throat> so I've been with the company since fall of 2014. So about a year even before 24 seven network launched, which I guess it's about three and a half years. So it's been, it's been a while. Yeah. I kind of think about, I, I forgot poker central was a, attempting to be a, a, like a 24 hour network on network television before you guys decided to go with the, with the poker goal model. And so we, I think a lot of people kind of, they saw poker central for a while, but they weren't sure what it was trying to be or what it was doing or exactly like what yeah. to expect from it. And then poker go came along and now you guys have really ramped it up. You're putting out, you brought back poker after dark. You've introduced a lot of these new concepts like the, the Poker Open and the Poker Masters. And now you guys are doing the Super High Roller Bowl. And now you're doing Super High Roller Bowl China coming up here. That's coming up in what, six days, five days? Is That's that what the 21st. That's right. So, so the 21st, is that going to be, so Super Roller Bowl China, it's a 300K, like a, a 175 million like won or something like that buy-in, right? Yeah, I believe it's 250K US buy-in. Don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly positive. Um, yeah, that's going to be next week. Um, we, that will not be on poker go live due to the time difference and certain streaming limitations we have in getting a feed from, uh, across the world, basically from China to the U S that being said, we do have plans to take the footage and potentially release something next month. So there's, there's a spoiler already right there. Stay tuned for that. So that might not be, that might not be live at, and anywhere, anywhere people can watch it on the internet or anything like that. It's, it'll be live with our Chinese partner abroad. All right, guys. It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a deal structured where basically they're licensing the Super High Roller Bowl brand, and so they're uh, it's it's their tournament entirely. All right, guys. If anyone out there has a, uh, Chinese access to this, any of my Chinese people out there, please get in touch with us. Let me know so we get to watch this through the untracked Chinese VPN sort of sites out there. So yeah, we're share, gonna find share, that thing. Share, man. share the link with me too. <laughs> See, I mean, so like, what's kind of, what's been your experience so far with uh, with Poker Go? Obviously, you, we mentioned you launched it last year. The feedback from the community, um, you know, I don't know, man. These guys don't like paying for anything. Obviously, you've seen some of the right. comments. You deal with the feedback. They don't like. They don't understand why they have to pay. A lot of people don't understand how Poker Central does this and makes any money. There's all the, I, these are like the two things I always hear the most from people is is why do we got to pay for this? 
And well, how are this? How are they making any money from doing this stuff? So I guess let's address the the uh, the idea of paying for the content. Kind of talk more about why the decision was made to to have this 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 monthly fee or the yearly fee, and then yeah, compared to compared to just putting it out for free. Sure. I mean, our 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 model is like you say, a subscription model. Um, Poker Go as a platform uh, competes on quality, uh, and quality and quantity, I guess. So. We, we our, our target every year is 100 plus days of live poker per year. So on average, every three or four days, you'll have a day of live poker, which I think is pretty powerful. And I mean, frankly, a lot goes into producing a live day of poker. If And Joe, you yourself have been on set for Poker After Dark, and you know how many people behind the scenes work on this stuff with all of the camera angles. They have the, um, you know, the, the overhead camera for a lot of the events, all the guys back in the truck and behind the scenes doing all the graphics and whatnot. There's just a lot of resources that go into it. And it's frankly, it's, it's, it's not a model that works for free. Um, you know, it's, we believe that the content that we put forward hundred plus days per year of live poker, plus some of the original programming we have to offer is certainly worth the cost of, of $10 a month. And if you, if you break it down on a dollar by dollar basis, you could say that you pay less than a dollar per day of poker. And at the quality that we, that we consistently deliver, uh, I think for, for most people and many people uh, that are currently subscribers today, that is well worth it. Yeah, I think kind of one thing people talk about is that, um, you know, there's so many people that could be watching this or that would watch this, but then they they never get a chance to find it organically. They're not on you. It's not they might not go on YouTube and see the show or they might not be able to go through their Facebook or anything like that. And I, I guess I that makes sense to me. That argument makes sense to me. Do you guys sort of think about maybe putting out? I mean, we've talked about this privately before, but the idea of putting out more more free content so to kind of give people a little bit of taste exactly what what they might be missing out there because obviously they get some hands out there too in short clips but it's a lot different than kind of coming on to an entire episode of something like that and being like oh wow okay this is back because i mean you talk to a lot of people here and they don't really know even poker after dark's back and these are guys yeah. who i would consider pretty big fans of poker no yeah i mean i i mean i find myself playing poker in my spare time and i'm in poker rooms and of course as a part of my job i i tend to prod a little bit and i'll ask around at the table who's heard of poker go who's watched poker after dark who knows about some of these things and a lot of people haven't and that's and that's a lapse on our part but that being said it's and we, and we again you've, we, you said it, we've talked about this privately where the balance you have to strike as a subscription service is that between exposure and exclusivity. And if you, you take, for example, although it's an it's example not really in the same ballpark as us, if you think of like a Game of Thrones that is built on premium content, it's behind the uh, HBO, I think it's HBO Now is their subscription service, it's behind their paywall, you would, you would never see a clip from Game of Thrones anywhere. You see teasers, you see trailers, you see uh, little short snippets that basically give nothing away. And that's sort of the gold standard, obviously, Poker is different than what Game of Thrones has become, and I'm, I'm not blind to that, of course. But that being said, it's sort of finding that balance between giving enough away where uh, it, it exposes potential new fans to the product while not giving up so much away where it it's, it's, it, it's basically a replacement for the content itself, if that makes sense. So that being said, it's, it's something that we've worked on over the past year and sort of gone back and forth internally about a great deal. And so looking to the next seven, several months, we're, we're certainly going to be expanding our, our free reach. Um, there's there, there's going to be an element of that with the WSOP this summer. And I don't want to get into it too much, having not announced any of this yet, but there will be some material that is available for free uh, outside the PokerGo paywall. It'll look a little bit different than what you'd see on PokerGo, but it'll be a compliment that I think satisfies all angles and uh, you know gives something of value to the social and non-paid community as well. Yeah, you mentioned kind of the idea about a Game of Thrones or a TV show like that. And, uh, you know, obviously poker, the content's always been free. So there's always been the, the World Series of Poker streams on Twitch mo almost, almost every year. Uh, actually, not every year, but the past couple of years. And the shows have all been out there for free, whether it's on NBC or whether it's on, you know, PokerTube. Who, I don't know if they just kind of steal things and put things up there. But so obviously the idea of having to now pay for that content. And, you know, I think people don't, they don't really see that well without without this being created, without them having to pay for the content, you wouldn't get to see Poker After Dark. You wouldn't get to see a, a Poker Masters or a Poker Open or the Super High Roller Bowl. So I feel like it might just take a couple of years for people to get used to it. But eventually I feel like they will get used to it because the quality is really high and if it continues to be high. But at the same time, there is a lot of competition out there from other free streams like Alive at the Bike or like the King's Casino or now Poker Night America. So how do you look at the idea of, of competing with some of these other streams that are free and that go almost every day? Some of these streams go every day or once or twice a week. 
Sure. I mean, for us, uh, we don't we don't really see it necessarily competition. I think that the more content is out there. To your point about exposing potential new fans and growing the game, it's always great to have more people creating poker content. And I think over the past few years, I th we we talked a little bit about this actually at the last American Poker Awards. It's been a little bit of a content renaissance over the past few years, where you have guys like yourself, guys like Doug Polk, moving away from the high stakes poker sector, coming in to create content which has been really cool to see. And it means that there's a model for poker content that works. So I think right now it's it's sort of the, the, the models trying to create itself, I guess, and there's different people doing different things. And I think as a whole, it's it's great for everyone to, to grow the game that way. And as a side piece and, and a, an important piece of what we're doing, uh, sub, even separate from the subscription stuff, is a lot of the linear television uh, distribution we're doing for all of our events. So right now we have a deal with NBC Sports uh, where we run Super High Roller Bowl, US Poker Open and Poker Masters in episodic form throughout the year. And then, of course, the ESPN deal with WSOP. And I, I, I believe this stat is that this is the most live poker this summer there will have ever been uh, with the World Series of Poker. It's going to be every, through, from, from day one to the end of the final table. There's everyday coverage in the main event on ESPN Network, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. I think that there was a lot of backlash from last summer with the wake so you guys you guys i guess you guys acquired what was it you acquired espn or you acquired the rights or what was that was the deal that you guys worked out to start streaming the world series of poker stuff on on poker go sure so basically we license the material from wsop and then we then do a separate deal with espn to distribute the deal to distribute the content on their networks so we have sort of a hybrid model of distribution between poker go and espn it's a lot like the ufc if you think about some of their big fights if you look at the lower card or the um the early fights on a given day it'll start i believe it's on ufc fight pass and then the middle card will go to fox sports and then the later card will go to pay-per-view so it's a very similar model to that just focusing on the subscription in linear TV piece, um, it is it's it's tough when you talk about you know having to work around blackouts and certain network restrictions that are contractual to these respective deals. But all in all, we talk about growing the game and exposing new fans to it. I, although a lot of uh, a lot of different companies are moving away from linear towards fully digital models, the best way to do it remains to get that linear distribution on a, on a Titan network like ESPN. Yeah, I mean, I feel like ESPN did so much for poker over these past bunch of years, and obviously they've dialed it a lot back. There used to be replay. I don't know if you, I don't know if you're old enough to remember this, Sam. You know, you're still you're you're young, twenty five years old, my friend. But <laughs> back in the day when you were like what, maybe fifteen? Or actually, you were like twelve or eleven or ten. They used to play the main. Can you? They used to play the main event. They would broadcast the fifteen hundred dollar limit event on ESPN two. Every single day throughout the week, there would be replays all the time. It's like in your face. And it did so much to build up a lot of these characters. Whereas now, I mean, I guess obviously I think we're all watching a lot less television. No, ESPN's not on in the background. ESPN 2 is not here in the background like it used to be. But it doesn't seem like you know, they kind of run the main event one time and then they might have replays once in a while. But you don't really see it on television as much as you did in the past. And it kind of just comes and then it and then it's live, and then it, the the shows, the edited shows, end up on ESPN, and then it sort of goes away until uh, until next you know next kind of July. And do you think there's any way to potentially, I guess, maybe change that and get more of that main event content out there with the ESPN or a big network like that? Or do you think that just costs too much and those days are sort of behind us? Yeah, I mean, it's those certainly were the glory days, and and you you're too kind by saying how young I am, but. Uh, I, I certainly remember uh, remember much of that. I mean, I was I was too young to play during the poker boom, but remember it well from uh, being surrounded by it with friends and family. But I mean, that's that's one of our goals, and and it's it, it 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 makes the most sense in our model business model as well is just to get as many hours on major networks as possible. So it's something we continue to do with NBC. We've we've grown that deal over the past couple of years. We extended uh, extended it out a couple of years, so that deal runs through 2020. ESPN runs for the next couple of years, and the back and forth that we not only have with ESPN but have with Caesars to make these events work within the context of the ESPN schedule. We take any and all hours they give us for all of the events. So this this year we. Uh, we're adding up. We we have the the main event, of course, and we added on one drop as well. That's going to be live on ESPN for day two in the final table. So, I mean, we we work with them constantly on trying to expand it, and of course, it's it's subject to ratings as well. So, if it does well for them, they're going to want more of it. So, at the same time, for anyone watching at home, please do go tune in to uh, everything out there, and they'll continue to put it on. 
Yeah, obviously the ratings go up when there's a big name there. You know, DeGrana was almost made the final table. I think it was, what, two, three years ago, something that like would, that. Yeah, that would have been. I think there were a lot of people sweating that and not just for being fans of him, but being for being fans of making money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime you have a, 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 a big name like that and he can make the final table, it's just people people are going to tune in in droves for that. So, so you mentioned the one drop. That's going to be a million dollar event that's coming back to kind of rotate. I think it's one year they do a million. The next year they do the 111 K. So they're going to be televising that this year. And then the any of the events they're going to be having on ESPN two or just be those two. It'll be the main event in the one drop. Um, and then it's much like last year, the main event will have windows every day uh, throughout the course of the entire event through the end of the final table. And the, the majority of hours that are not on ESPN will be on poker go. So do you guys have any plans to um, redesign, I guess, the setup or the situation going on at the Rio? I feel like we've had the the spaceship stage. And, and last year, I liked that they added the people. They added, you know, the guys out front. I think I saw Doug up there and Tuckman was doing a lot of that commentary up there. But they did take it out of that main Anazam room and they put it in the side room there. Mm. I guess, is there any plans or any, any kind of ideas to to redesign the setup or the way things look or the way things are over there right now? I haven't heard too much about the plans for that. We will have a, a similar primary setup. And uh, to allude to what I mentioned earlier, we, we were looking at potentially a secondary setup elsewhere in the uh, in the ballroom uh, for additional final tables. Yeah, because last year there's a lot of complaints about the final tables. They, uh, I don't know, they sometimes they were like in the side and people couldn't watch them. And, and I mean, I think that's maybe more, that's more of World Series of Poker, which I'm going to get into I'm going to get into those entire issues in a separate video about the World Series of Poker, and I'm going to talk more with them as well, too, about some of the things last year. You, di you didn't be responsible for those bathrooms, Sam, right? You didn't, I, you didn't, you I didn't know, break I'll, the bathrooms, right? I'll, I'll put in the word. Um, I, I, I myself as a player as well, having played the main event and a few others throughout the summer, I know the, the issue of the bathrooms, and I could say that it's it's hard to take whatever it is 10,000 plus dudes that all come into one place and all need to use the same restroom and make bathrooms work. I don't know what the solution is, but uh, yeah, that that would be a World Series of Poker matter. Yeah, we're uh, we definitely want to get rid of that phone charger guy in the hallway. That that he repeats phone chargers for for seven weeks you know, straight. That's and you can sell though. I mean, we we need to sell advertising for Poker Go, and I swear this summer I'm going to track that guy down and, and send him to New York to talk to these agencies about uh, bringing in some advertisers. That I, I think that's a good idea. My, like, I'm not. I think that's a great idea. That guy, he just like Seriously. wears you down and wears you down about Fine, the phone. I get one. it. <laughs> right. It's like, I, I get it. We got phone charge. I, I understand. Believe me, if I need to charge my phone, I'm going to look, I'm going to see a charger. Yeah. I'll buy it from you. I don't, I don't need you to yell at me about that. So <laughs> we got a lot of people in the chat guys. What's going on everybody out there, man. Thanks for tuning in today. Back in the podcast, my dude, Poppy. Yeah. We're in the Cuban poppy head today, guys. This is in honor of my, um, of my time down in Miami last year. Sam, you were in Miami last year. I was in Miami last year and I'm very sad to not be back this year. It might be good for yours and my life to not be back in Miami this year. I'm going to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Last year was, um, if you guys follow my Instagram last year, you might've saw, uh, some, some fun Miami moments down there. So it seems like you're back in Vegas now. What, what's the main focus for the company right now? Is it getting prepared for super high roller bowl or, or is it working on what, what are you guys working on right now? So super high roller bowl is a big upcoming one. Uh, I, we announced yesterday that we're going to be doing the live lottery on, yeah. Wednesday of next week, which would be pretty cool. We're going to do that on Poker Go for the first time. It's going to be a whole setup with graphics on screen. All these going to be hosting the things. So that should be a lot of fun. And I mean, with that, with the gravity of that event, that's that's a two month build up for that. And then separately, you know, we're we're working a lot behind the scenes of the World Series of Poker, ironing out the streaming schedule, getting everything situated for a a long and successful summer as we have planned. And then separately, we are actually going to be pretty soon announcing some some, some pretty exciting stuff with our new studio setup. Oh. Um, more to, more to come on that, but uh, we have some we have a pretty cool build out you could say planned for that'll facilitate some new events uh, for poker and some other activities as well. So. Look for announcement about that in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so you guys are building a new studio. It's so right now Poker After Dark's run inside the Aria, and you guys are building your own separate studio in the front of City Center, right under the. It'll under be Hotel. it's it's something like that, yeah. Hmm. Something more, more more to come. Secret details. I feel like this studio has been being worked on for over a year, so it, it it's it's taking a <laughs> taking a big studio. I'm thinking here. You uh yeah you're you're telling me. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to kind of see. So you mentioned some t idea. You mentioned you got some new shows or new new sort of things in the in the works here that that poker fans can expect out there. Yeah, I mean, and so we, and especially when you talk about growing the game, you know, it's 
it's one of those things where you, you have a, a tight knit group that's going to love the stuff like Super High Roller Bowl, U.S. Poker Open, Poker Masters, Poker After Dark. But at the same time, too, a lot of that stuff sort of becomes rinse and repeat a lot of the time. Like I think U.S. Poker Open was a, a great case study for that, where you saw a guy like Stephen Chidwick just run train event after event after event. And you start to have deja vu, like, okay, this is the same final table as we've seen a handful of times now. But it's, it's awesome because it's great play and it's so fun to watch from a skill perspective. But when we talk about bringing in that more casual fan that may not understand the nuances of triple barrel bluffing with complete air when your head's up, as, as Chidwick was doing at certain times, it's, it's hard to appreciate. So I think one of the focuses going forward for new events is going to be much heav more heavily geared towards the casual audience and, and you know, creating a fun environment, creating different variants, focusing on storylines, focusing on narratives. And it, it's, it's said a lot, so that doesn't really say much, I, I guess. But that being said, it's, it's, that's, that's going to be our focus is shifting from sort of that hardcore tight knit group into like, you know, some of the fun stuff and, uh, you know, kind of a little, little bit in my mind harkens back to the poker boom days of these, some of these larger than life personalities that emerged and were just so fun to watch on TV. Yeah. I feel like, uh, the storyline stuff's really gone away. So you mentioned a Stephen Chidwick and for ESPN back in the day, the way they built up these people was you repetitively saw them, but they also did these little pieces with them that they'd work into the product. They'd work into the show. They might go to the football field and they did some crazy stuff with prop betting or they went golfing with, with Negreanu and Ivy. And it really gave you, uh, gave you the viewer at home a way to learn more about these people in the actual telecast. You didn't have to go someplace else to learn about them or go here or go there. During it, you could watch that. And I guess that would be one idea that that I think would really help out something like a Super High Roller Bowl and even the main event. Obviously, Super High Roller Bowl, you can do that ahead of time. For some of the people, like at least learn a little bit more backstory about them because we have the pop-up graphic that comes and it's like, oh, this guy was a chess champion at 13. And that kind of gives some added layer of context to who that person is. But I do think that people want, probably want to know more about these guys as well. And even you know that costs money, of course. And then you just decide, is that worth the time? Is that worth the energy to do that? But I yeah. do think that, that stuff like that is really helpful for building up those personalities and then getting them out there and people to know them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's immensely important. I would agree. It, 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 and to your point, it, it comes down to a lot of different factors. Um, obviously, scheduling of these things where you're playing an event of 25K, 50K plus buy-ins and you want to pull these guys aside, guys or gals, pull them aside to learn more about them to interview them even if you ne don't necessarily go to the golf course but just do some behind the scenes features of some sort but you know they're this, the, the game is so mindset focused more recently where it's hard to pull someone out of that environment when they're so in the zone say for super high roller bowl to if you're looking at a day three or day four when you're you're getting down on the money bubble around the final table and you want to highlight these people when they walk into the ballroom to come back and keep playing the last thing they want to do is sit with an interviewer and talk about you know what they do on their spare time on weekends so it's 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 that it's it's, a, it's certainly a cost element too it's delivery of episodes so when we have a super high roller bowl let's say we are we, we need to then do, create episodes to send them to nbc sports to run on their network about a month or month and a half later depending on what the schedule looks like and so we got to get those out pretty quickly and the editing on these takes a little bit of time but beyond that so Obviously, my job it's it, it sort of covers live poker or or uh, yeah live poker and original programming. And so that's 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 my one of my goals for 2018 is to use our original programming uh, inventory as a sort of way to highlight those personalities. And so Super High Roller Club was sort of one of the first forays into that, and that that released about a month or so ago at this point, and that profiled a few different players: uh, Dana Negreanu, Phil Hellmuth, Farah Galfon, Brandon Adams, um, Nick Shulman and Antonio Sfandiari, and we sort of followed them in their, it was hosted by Alina Jad, followed them in their escapades, in their, and, and they were they were things they legitimately joined doing. Sure, there were simulated situations, of course, but these, we actually, you know, profiled them, talked to them, find out what they enjoyed. Uh, Farah's episode was about her going to a mezcal tasting and pairing with Ali downtown in, in Vegas, and she talks a little bit about how she had a specialty cocktail at her wedding with Phil that was that was mezcal uh, as the as the main liquor. So things like that, just, you know, even if it's if it's away from the table, you know, talking to them about what they enjoy doing and and how they live their everyday lives. And going forward, we have a few other projects in the works uh, heading into Soup High Roller Bowl and WSOP this summer that are that are very much heavily in that same vein where they they follow not only players, but people around the game and sort of, uh, you know, get their backstory, get their, you know, behind the scenes type uh, lifestyle and uh, find out who they are outside of poker. 
Yeah, it sounds pretty fun. I think those are those are good. You can kind of show those clips during shows as well, too, potentially as well. Or it kind of just the, the more people get a chance to learn more about these people and kind of some of those guys, obviously, they've been around for a long time with the Helmuth and the Granus, so So people know about them. But like a Farragall Fond, who is sort of new to the scene, she started playing the high stakes cash games and she started playing a little bit on poker after dark. I feel like that's pretty cool for people to get to know more about her. And you thought about, you talk about um, bringing in the casual fans through content. And I guess, what do you think really attracts these casual fans to, to want to tune in? Is it the big names or is it, is it the vibe or, or what do you, what do you kind of think makes the content that they want to kind of watch like that? I think at the end of the day, it's about creating relatable themes across the board that you don't necessarily need to understand the ins and outs of poker to understand. And I think for, for an event like Super High Roller Bowl, let's say the, the life changing element of a $6 million first place is something that anyone can understand. It it kind of, it reminds me well of the, uh, the aces versus aces hand from one drop. Uh, I guess I think that was 2012 that went viral after it aired on ESPN. And that was something that was a sort of similar dynamic where, yeah, I mean, you, you, you look at the, the people in the comments talking about poker and how, the other guy should have folded as, as if Dryden was going to fold pocket aces at any point. And then they were saying that he should have folded on the flop as if you could fold on the flop. People obviously don't understand poker, but they understand or, and can at least empathize with what it would be like to lose a million dollars based upon sheer luck in that situation. So, and, and, and there's certainly other examples outside of that, but it's about finding sort of that common denominator, uh, whether it's, whether it's the massive, the massive stakes, the lifestyle elements, the, the, the Vegas environment of wanting to come here and gamble a little bit, get a little crazy, have a little fun, that sort of stuff I think resonates really well. Yeah. I was talking with uh, my friend, Nate, who, who works for Barstool Sports. He writes for Barstool Sports and he started working in some more poker content and he said, uh, the Jake Cody clip. So Jake Cody, this clip went a little bit viral where he won a tournament for forty thousand. And then he put it on black. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that, that, that's that guy's a hero. I wish I had the balls for that. Yeah. I mean, first of all, don't try that at home. And second of all, Nate messaged me. He's like, Yeah, that was my best, that was my best blog. People love that kind of stuff. They love the gambling. I'm just like, that's that's like it's kind of weird that that's the kind of stuff that it's going to bring someone in poker. Dan Bilzerian is going to bring people in poker, but it's kind of like maybe with this new age and the way that content is and the way that social media is, it's like people like that. It might not be maybe what it was before to bring people in poker. It's, it's a Dan Bilzerian and it's people being degenerate. It's like that, that might be what it takes because there's so much competition out there from esports, which you guys are involved with uh, as a company as well. You guys get into that space more and the esports stuff. And there's so much more things to do online now that are, exciting there's a lot of exciting things to do out there so now when you look at poker and you say well poker is being presented as this one way of these people who don't say much and they're just kind of sitting there and i've seen it for 15 years and it hasn't really changed you know well ah maybe ah you know but this this is exciting we don't know much about this we got we got add issues we can't sit still so i feel like that's sort of the challenge for poker is okay let's figure out different ways to present the content that's going to attract those casual fans who are now blinded by distractions everywhere. And then that's its whole entire other challenge altogether. And that's that, that part can be tough. The, the word I like to use in all this is aspirational. It's sort of, you know, I, 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 when I watch Jake Cody doing $40,000 spins on a roulette and winning as someone at home, I want to be that guy. As I just said, I'm sitting here. I'm like, I want to have the balls for that. That's so cool. That's so much fun. And I mean, of course, it's it, it wouldn't be as cool if he lost. But that being said, it's 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 fun to watch at home from from the safety of your home. You might, you might say. I wish he would. I wish. I, I mean, Jake's my guy. I wish he would have lost because I know there are people that went and did that. I just know it. There's no. There are 100 percent people watch that and they're like, oh man, let's go put. You know, not maybe not that much money, but let's go put this money on black. And then they. Uh, it turns out, guys, it's not in your favor. Although he had 50 50 there because they took away the zero in that spin. But in your casino roulette you have the two greens. So it's not in your favor long-term. No gamble, no future. Well, I mean, that's that's definitely my <laughs> motto up famous, here. Famous last words. So I guess the so idea of, of making money, this is something I always talk, whenever I talk with business people that are familiar with Poker Go, they say, well, how are they ever going to make money in the subscription? What do they have? A million people signed up at $10 a month. It's something I always talk about. So I guess the idea uh, of making this money back that you guys are spending, because obviously spending a lot of money, what's the, what's the idea for... For trying to, I guess, become a profitable company, which I imagine is one of your guys' big goal. Yeah, I mean, I th- we've we've done well so far, I can say. Um, and it, it's sort of a, 
a dual approach. It's a little, I've talked a little bit about it already, but it's, I mean, of course we have the subscription piece, which is, which is poker go, but then we also on the, the linear television side, we, we sell against our programming as well. So we, mm-hmm. we, we create some, some, uh, ad revenue there on everything on the cable networks. And then of course, sponsorships and all of our events in the same way. So mm-hmm. it's, it's sort of a, a three pronged approach that uh, is not, is not, does not begin and end with subscription, I guess. Yeah. I feel like the people I talk to, they, I mean, I don't know what these people know. I, I don't know if they know anything. They're always talking about, well, they can't make that much. They probably don't make that much money from the from the sponsorships or from the banners they show and those type of stuff. Obviously, like, I'm not familiar with that in any sort of way. And I think a lot of people out there aren't familiar with that. So they just sort of see the subscription and they're like, well, is anyone watching it or how many people are signed up? How are they? But I would imagine yeah, a lot no, of those, I mean, that's, those, that's... those revenue sources, those are pretty good revenue sources to have if you're on ESPN cool. and selling commercial time and then you have these prime time locations on on your shows. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's it's very fair and it's I can say that we wouldn't have done this if we didn't have the model in order. It's uh it's a model that's proven to work. You look at like I, I mentioned earlier UFC and UFC Fight Pass, WWE Network is the same way. There's a hand there's you see a bunch of uh niche subscription products popping up and and WWE Network is one of the few that has announced the number of subscribers they have because they're a public company. And last I checked, they were at, I believe, 1.5 million subscribers. And not, that's, I mean, that would be, that would be an awesome goal for us to have. And at some point, sure, we'd love to be there. I uh, wouldn't expect to be there anytime soon. But that being said, uh, you know, it, I think the interest is there, the market is there, and then it's our job to go, to go grab it. And then as far as the other lines of revenue, I, you know, you, you know, Richard, our, our head sales guy here out of Vegas, and he does, he, uh, when he's, when he's not at the clubs, he does a phenomenal job with selling, uh, to some of the biggest companies in, in the, uh, in the U S we have great sponsors in Amazon dollar shave club, um, Jack in the box, a handful of eight at eight poker and a handful of others. And he just, they've, they've, you know, They've blown things out of the water as it pertains to selling sponsorship inventory. Yeah, Rich is. I think Rich is at the club selling. I I don't know what the man's doing, but I he needs to put a course out there on how to sell advertisers to company. We talk, we, we, we talk about the cell the cell phone guy at the WSOP, Richard. If Richard was there selling cell phones, I swear to God, they would they would be empty by the end of the summer. Yeah, he is. Uh, he does he does a great job, man. And and yeah, so you guys are you guys are both new to the poker space, and you guys have been you know even a couple of years. It's still pretty new for when I look at it. What's been the learning curve for just learning how the world works and learning how people in the world interact with each other? Yeah, it's it's a steep one. Is the answer is a short answer to that question. That being said, I, I was I grew up around poker. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I had I had friends and family that played. I remember the poker boom fondly. Not necessarily being able to play, uh, but you know, just being exposed to it. And so I've I've always been a fan of the game myself, and I kind of happened upon this situation. And it's been an experience to get caught up on you know some of the storylines in poker, some of the relationships in poker, some of the even the taboo topics in poker that I, I might not have been exposed to. And one of the ones that always resonates with me is sort of the Black Friday scandals and the culprits that are still attributed to having caused a lot of that. And I, I have always understood the animosity that is still held for some of those people, but having not lived it, having not been affected by it, it's it's been interesting for me to go back and sort of learn more about what exactly happened and how those who are deemed to be responsible, how it's portrayed that way and for good reason. And, and you know, and that's, that's, all, that's obviously only one example, but certain things like that, you know, getting into poker's history to find out why certain things are the way they are today has always been very interesting to me. Yeah, I found that kind of fascinating too when I was looking into the ultimate bet. So the ultimate bet when I was doing research for this America's card room with 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 all the out of line activity happening there, I, I looked into ultimate bet and absolute poker and I really wasn't paying that much attention to it at the time because I was sort of focused on grinding myself and just consumed by that, just trying to get as good as I could. And I'm like, man, I didn't even realize any of this stuff. Even Black Friday, I never really paid attention. I was just like, fuck, what am I gonna do? My like I have my money on the site. I gotta get I gotta get to Canada. I tried playing live poker back then. So I didn't really pay attention to the specifics of exactly what happened, but it's it's got to be quite fascinating to kind of go through that and be like, wow, they shut these shut these major companies down. This one company went under. They took hundreds of millions of dollars from the players, and then they just didn't give it back, and no one got in trouble for it. Really, I mean, there's been some stuff happen happened with Howard Letter and 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 Ray Bittar, but for the most part, no one's really got in trouble for that. 
Yeah, so, I mean, the saddest yeah. part is that there hasn't been more information about it that's been come out, and you and you wish that some of the key players would ha- would have, but even now would come out and speak on it and provide some insight on at least their side of the story, beyond kind of going into hiding and not saying much. But yeah, I mean, it's it it and even you know there, there's different examples of government shutdowns or government takeovers. Well, you don't. It's so far away in D.C. You don't really think much about it, especially when you're young. But then you hear some of the stories from certain individuals who are actually affected by it, where they have six, seven figures locked up in a bank account that they don't know if they're going to get back. That's just wild. I mean, there's, there's these guys back then were, were using this as a savings account of sorts that would, that would generate interest for them, but th- they were generating interest by playing as winning players. And you, you then overnight, you just have it all it potentially wiped away. And the, just the anxiety that would cause the pain that would cause is just, is it's, it's unreal really. Yeah, I, I'm getting more interested in deep diving into this because I've been talking with some uh, like old timers who are familiar with the, the crew and the people and, and they kind of tell me stories that I've never quite heard of before. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is uh, just the players involved. And it's like a fascinating thing. So but I, yeah. I just guess for, for, for Poker Central, Poker Go, what's been one of the biggest challenges so far in terms of just whether it's from the content side or whether it's from building an audience side or the marketing side, where, where do you find the biggest challenge right now is with 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 things? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it's 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 not so much challenges, but more, I guess, learning experiences. And I think as a as a as a company or any company, really, there's there's never a clean path to growth, and it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of testing, especially with. And to your point earlier about you're, we're, we we're entering a market that is not accustomed to paying for content, and we're having to convince people that our content's worth paying for. And that's that, that's our job to do. And sometimes we've done a good job and sometimes we haven't done a good job. So navigating that landscape has been has been interesting and has been has been a learning curve for us. And I think that we're we're getting better at it and we are we have learned some invaluable lessons over the past nine months of of being live as a service. And we're looking forward to implementing those uh, going forward as early as this summer. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see where things go. I mean I gotta say, you know, I'm always I'm always talking about on Twitter about how some of these companies out there and the poker sites, they don't really try anything new or be innovative at all. And, and when it comes to high stakes or cash games, but I think it's really good to see poker central putting out such high, at least trying ideas, right? Like you tried the U S poker open, you tried the poker masters and, and who, who knows if, if these things are going to be good long-term, it might take a while and it's going to be a, a learning curve once again, to figure out how to tweak that. And maybe it's the format or it's presentation, but it's, these are some new ideas. They're at least you're trying new things out there, which I think is really, really good for poker because we haven't had anyone trying anything new for so long. It's just sort of been the same stuff repetitively. And, and yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's, uh, yeah, it, that's that, like it, my favorite part of seeing things is, is just seeing these new ideas being presented to the poker audience. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's always been important to us. We, we take great care in crafting these events, um, different shows. We can, we consult, I mean, especially for like super high roller bull US poker open and poker masters, we have a sort of think tank of some of the the top tier high stakes pros who create an environment that's most conducive to pros of that caliber. And so we want to create the the best fields, the best quality of not only, not only the quality of content, but quality of poker play. I mean, some of the stuff these guys are doing at these final tables is just sick. But um, yeah, I mean, but it's, it's at the same time too, it's all about improvement. And I, I, I joke with, uh, with Carrie, who's the founder of our company, he he's he's obsessed with with improvement and, and creating these and creating these fantastic events. And as as recently as U.S. Poker Open, you know, we obviously during like a ten or eleven day stretch of the U.S. Poker Open, we're we're here in the office grinding, going to and fro from Aria, and then when it all wraps up, all you want to do is exhale. And the next day, I get a structure sheet for U.S. Poker Open 2019 in my inbox with like everything that he wants to change. Like here's here's what can be better. Here's here's what we can improve on. Here's how I want to do it. Here are the dates I want to do it. So it's it's all about improvement. It's all about collecting feedback uh and, and just getting better over time and in all aspects of the business. And that's and that's the one thing that I came on here and I wanted to say to to anyone, all the fans watching at home, is that we're a feedback driven company. So obviously the more constructive the feedback the better, but we are listening to everything that comes in. We love to hear feedback. Um, and anything that any ideas, whether they be improvements to current ideas or new ideas entirely that you think would be cool to watch, please do bring them our way. We'd love to hear more about them. Chris P says poker cribs. I used to love the poker cribs, like the cribs they did. I think it was like card player back in the day. Poker cribs, Sam, going that's, around. That's 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 that's, le- that's a legit idea, and that's something that we that we've discussed uh, internally. Actually, Super High Roller Clubs a little bit in that sense, but it's outside the house. 
Um, it, the, the question for us is going to be the number of pros that actually live in sick houses or even have a house because these guys are on the road so much. So it would be it would it would come down to casting, but that is a great idea, Chris P. Yeah, you're like, uh, come come to my house. Okay, where where do you live? Well, I got a one bedroom apartment right now. I'm just, uh, but I'm gonna go play in Bobby's room. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and that could be that could be something out there that um what did this comment here is chip extractor says is programming more episodic miniseries type stuff like dead money more in the plans given the success of that programming? Yes. <laughs> yes, there will be. We uh, dead money obviously. Yes. I think I think of of our events or our um, original series as far as dead money has been one of the more successful, and it's a it's a show and it, it's a sort of type of show we'd like to replicate. And I think I think it goes back a little bit to what we discussed earlier about elevating these personalities. And you had a guy like Matt Berkey before Soup Pie Roller Bowl. I mean, I remember him making the rounds during that run, uh, you know, doing the poker news podcast and and having all these all these articles written about him. And who is this mystery guy, Matt Berkey, who shows up in a in a full suit <laughs> for the Soup Pie Roller Bowl final table. And it was it was cool to see. And so to be able to profile a guy like that through the series Dead Money and working in partnership with them was a was a fantastic experience. And it's that's that's sort of our focus for 2018 is finding similar types of shows that that elevate maybe lesser known personalities. I should say lesser known and and more known as well. But there's a, there's certain angles to some of the more famous pros that maybe haven't uh, haven't been seen by the fans to date. Um, who who came out? Who was chasing hearts? That wasn't your idea, right, Sam? That was an interesting idea. That was, um, I, it was, it was a collective idea and that it, it again goes back to sort of that, that casual hardcore mix of where, how, how far do we go which way? And there are certain instances where maybe we go too far one way. So I think, I think that chasing hearts as a, as a, um, <laughs> As a general, a, a general idea. Whose idea was chasing hard, Sam? Stop! Stop this! It was, stop! It was, this it was, straight it was, a, it was a group cannot, idea. It was a group idea, and I think I think you're, that you're too good at this. I think I think, that, I think that I think that certain audiences would would be very compelled by that show, and that uh, it, it, it the the the, uh, the results of that show certainly have uh, been a part of the learnings I mentioned earlier. We, we needed better looking. So have you guys ain't seen Chasing Hearts? It's like a blind, allegedly a blind date thing. And then there's two people behind the scenes. It and was, then okay, no, no, but for real, that was, that was a legit blind date scenario. I flew to New York myself to be there on site. It was, it was shot in this tiny Italian place in Brooklyn. They, they had, uh, Blake Eastman and, um, I can't remember. Or it's uh, something sweet but in, in the in the back kitchen doing all the commentary. That was that. Would, none of that was simulated. That actually all played out that way. Honest to God. And they were all. It was all casted. They were all. It was. It was a blind date scenario. I don't. I don't know necessarily if they actually stayed together or if they had a second date. But it was. It was all of them. It was their first time meeting, and they were. They were all. I mean, to be honest, they were. They were all aspiring actors. Something tells me that they weren't there to find love. But it was a blind date. I think a better idea would have been I just go on six blind dates and then they just they grade my blind date ability and I just you, you would, find me six dates and and just watch me go on date with you, them. You, I think would, that like, would you, would, you would like that, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course I like that. Of course I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I maybe I need to set that up for myself. I go on the six blind dates. You know, whatever, man. I just go there on dates. Go. That's just that's just that's just your normal Saturday, though. <laughs> I mean, that's true. <laughs> That's pretty true out there. Uh, Arthur Art, Arthur Teredia says, Arthur Ter, 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 Arthur Terita, Terarita, has Poker Go grown in the way you expected to begin with? Yeah, it certainly has. Uh, there's certainly, like I said, it's all about learning. There's, there's been hiccups here and there, but if a year ago I were to tell myself that we would be here, I would be pleased. So all in all, it's been it's been very positive. Are you guys ever going to say how many people are watching this stuff? Because that's a question I get from people. They're like, how many people do you think are watching? No, Poker sir. Avatar? No, sir. Why not? Why can't you tell? Give us a hint. It's, it's, it's confidential information. It's, uh, when, do, when does Netflix announce uh, how many oh, people are watching their shows? Oh, man. I, Reed Hoffman, man. Listen, shout out to my guy, Reed Hoffman. He's in charge of Netflix. Yeah, he doesn't talk about it. You're right. Man, come on. Come on, Sam. Give us a little idea. In, in, industry standard. It's, I, can, I can say that it is... It is better than a lot of the Twitch and Facebook live streams out there that are for mm. free. Mm. That's it. Yeah, I think that's, like that's a, that's, a, that's a Joe Ingram exclusive. Well, 
I mean, to be fair, I, I don't I don't know if people those, a lot of the cash games are getting on a regular basis or anything like that. But I think the biggest one I really see is is maybe live at the bike. They have something like a thousand, thirteen hundred people that watch some of their shows in the bigger games. Obviously, more people watch those. And then some of the other ones on Twitch, like the Stones, it's a few hundred people that watch those. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it, cer it certainly, of course, varies lineup by lineup, event by event. But we we have been very pleased with subscribership and uh, and average viewership on a on a regular basis. Are you guys doing anything to bring more women into poker, Sam? That is that is a hot hot button issue. Um, yes, I mean we we spend so much of our time. Brent specifically, I mean, I, I would, I would be doing a, a major company disservice if I did not give a shout out to Brent for these lineups. And that's someone you should have on the podcast to talk about poker after dark lineups is Brent at some point, because holy Jesus, these stories he has are unreal. <laughs> Anyways, you know, we, we take great effort in, you know, reaching out in recruiting for soup, high roller bowl, us poker, open poker masters, contacting some of the high stakes ladies out there. Uh, Kathy Laney is one that comes to mind. There was a woman from the Bay Area whose name escapes me right now who came up for U.S. Poker Open. We were super stoked about. And then, of course, with Poker After Dark, setting up uh, the all-female lineup we had in January and doing some more of that in the future is, is certainly something that we want to do. It's, I mean, it, it just, it's tough. I mean, with a lot of these high-stakes fields, you're sort of subject to who's willing to, to fork over their own money. And that's, that's an important note for all of our, all of our high-roller events in Poker After Dark is we're not, we're not providing compensation to the players that show up. Everyone that does so does so to play, to play in the game, to risk their own money, to, and to win money, ultimately, is, is what they're there for. So it's, it's subject to who's, who's willing to do that. And that sort of takes it out of our hands, but we are constantly encouraging as many females as we're able to get out to play to come and join us. Yeah, you mentioned Brent Hanks, who does uh, does a great job of getting the lineups together. I feel like that's a full time job right there, just navigating personalities and then the people want to play job. with who. And yeah, that that part can be, can I imagine, was probably pretty tough. I see some people in chat saying, "Why can't we have a chat room when there are live events?" Now, guys, I just want to let you know, remind you, when there are a thousand people plus in the chat, the chat's terrible. Do you guys not? It's just scrolling nonsense, hatred, trolling, assholes. Like that's what the chat's like. And and I guess when you think about chat for for the show, have you thought about adding that element to two things? Yeah, I mean, we we actually have it as a uh, a development item in in the works for down the road. For us, it's going to be on an event by event basis and when it makes sense. I think typically it, there's a, there's a lot that goes into a chat that to your, to your point about what the chat becomes at a thousand a thousand or more people. It, it it there's certain factors that go into it. It, it. It's it's usernames, it's it's moderators, it's monitoring the language in the chat, monitoring abuse, things like that. So for us, that's additional staffing that we need to consider. And for it, it, it ultimately, it'll, it'll be on an event by event basis type of thing. When it makes sense for the event that we're showing, then we'll likely implement it. Yeah, we kind of I'm pitching the idea on Twitter about condensing the the five six hour poker products because I think for me. I want to watch the poker after darks, but when I go on there, uh, it's, you know, six hours, there's breaks in between. I'm sort of scrolling through. It's not always the most friendly replay or sometimes just goes crazy at me a little bit. Is there, a, is there potentially something like that in the works where maybe you take the highlight hour of a show and put it together? Obviously, once again, that's hours that does take time too to be able to do something like that. But do you think that something like that would, uh, is potentially in the works or would be a great idea? I think it is. I think it's a really good idea. And, and you know, we have the recaps now, which admittedly are are pretty simplistic in how they're put together. It's essentially a, a strung together series of several of the highlight hands mm -hmm. throughout the day. And it's hard to pick up on storylines through that. I mean, I, I guess, as, as I said earlier, with uh, editing for some of these poker events that we do when we turn on an episode of NBC Sports, that often can take for even an hour episode upwards of a few days to a week to to really perfect it. So it's it's a question of turnaround time uh, for us. And, it, and maybe it's something where we start to implement it on some of the major events. Uh, but yeah, that being said, it's certainly something that we've considered. And for for yourself and anyone else watching, any suggestions on that, uh, we're absolutely listening on how, on how you'd expect that to be structured. So during the live show, can you only rewind so far? It doesn't let you rewind all the way back, like 30 minutes or an hour? Yeah, uh, that's... Yeah, that's that's something else that we're working on too. Is uh, is in, in, it's sort of in our development backlog is is being able to enter a show midstream and then start from the beginning and watch to the end rather than have to come in in the middle. Um, it's so as as we've announced in the past, we we partner with New Lion who hosts our hosts the Poker Go platform. They have they have other clients like uh, the NBA, 
Uh, they do the UFC fight pass, all of that. And so we work with them on all these items. And for us, you know, we, we, we sort of, we, we stood up this product pretty quickly. We actually sort of behind the scenes, the poker go idea came to be about six months before we launched. So to put together the product that quickly, given how much some of the development stuff takes was pretty impressive. And so we launched what we had ready at that time. And for us now it's sort of prioritizing what we want to improve about the product and then right. developing and rolling that out over time. So pretty much anything that you can say, I've seen on Twitter or seen mm -hmm. elsewhere from people who have messaged me, it's been considered, it's been added to the backlog and it's on the list for eventual development. Well, it makes a lot more sense now when you said they also do the NBA because uh, the NBA is one of the one of the worst things. Their uh, their league pass, the international league pass is. I don't know if international league pass someone differently does that, but the domestic league pass very questionable. The replayer on the NBA.com very questionable out there. So it this makes way more. Now it just makes a lot more I've sense. Never, I've never used I've never used NBA, but uh, I can't. Oh, no, if you I can't did, if you I, I no shots at these guys, but if you did, you might have you might have you might have shopped around a, a little bit. I'm telling you right now, man. It's uh it's been a bit. There's some definitely some complaints about the NBA replayer, but I mean I don't I don't know if a lot of I don't use many many services. I use uh, WWE. I have WWE Network because yeah. I grew up watching that. I just donate sure. my ten dollars there, but I, I like their I like the way their network's set up. But I mean these are all still new things as well too, and. And these aren't things that have been around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and for us, yeah. it's all business decisions. Where, where for, from our perspective, it's typically the questions: buy or build. And you can you can buy the service through a third party, or you can build it yourself. And we're all we're constantly weighing, uh, you know, cost benefit of certain decisions. And who knows down the road if that'll change? But it is what it is right now, and we're certainly making the most of it. Where would you study? Where would you study how to give answers, Sam? Be honest. Where'd you study? You uh, I I run I run PR for the company actually, so I'm the I'm the one telling other people how to frame their answers. So you bet your ass I'm going to frame my answers the right way. <laughs> you should write it. You should maybe do a course, kid. Maybe be like this. Be like the little side part. You give the course. There you how, go. There how to you give go. how to give how to give the great answers, man. I'm PR, telling you. PR PR 101. You got to teach Dreyfus this, man. AD's got to learn. You got to got to get on with my French guy over there and. and and maybe teach him how to give some of these answers right now. <laughs> hey, my office is open. What's what's the goals for you, man? What's the personal goals for you? Is it something, is it all, do they all tie in with the company? I know you play a lot of poker as well. You recently played one of the U.S. Poker Open events too. Is it kind of trying to get better at that? A combination of both, obviously your personal life as well too. Some sort yeah. of, you know, where do you stand right now with things? Of course. I mean, I, I, a business is certainly a large part of my goals, but it's not all of it. Uh, you mentioned poker. That's something that I'm going to think I'll be doing more of over the next several months. I'm hoping to play as much as I can during the World Series. I actually I did play a U.S. Poker Open event. I played another. I played one of the other 10K high rollers a couple weeks ago. And as I'm sure you've experienced when you're getting better at the game, you're you're very advanced at this point. But early on, I'm sure you probably had a moment where you, whether you were playing live or online where you sit across from someone and it's kind of a surreal moment where, especially especially in my position where my job is to elevate a lot of these personalities and to mm -hmm. broadcast the final tables. And we talk about seeing the same people at these final tables. And at one point in this 10K high roller, we were at, we were down to the final six and the five, five came back for the next day for the poker go final table. And the final, the final six was myself, Sean Winter, Stephen Chidwick, Nick Shulman, Byron Caverman, and I can't recall the sixth right now, but oh, David Peters was the sixth. And just generally like that final table was so sick. And I know I'm sitting there as by far the worst player at the table, but I had, I had a moment where I'm like, you know, I could actually compete at this level. And I'm like, I, I, I don't feel scared, which is a, which is a very, uh, which is a very good feeling. So it's, that was sort of a, a sort of an adrenaline shot of, of poker passion and drive where you know, I can do this. I might, I want to play some more of those events. I want to dig into some of the World Series events this summer and ultimately improve my game. And obviously, and they say one of the best ways to improve is by watching the best do it. And you can you can only imagine the number of hours I've spent watching these final tables, watching Poker Go myself as I'm tuned in for every live stream that we have on the platform. So just in 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 consuming my own product, I, I think I've gotten exponentially better. So hoping for more success there. And then outside of that, you know, family, friends, and otherwise have, have my goals there. But uh, as you know, Morgan, my girlfriend, she is, she's a lovely gal. Uh, we're, we're doing well and everything else is hunky door with my life right now. So looking for continuation through 2018. Are you going to be playing the great game of Pop in Omaha anytime soon, Sam? Are you going to be trying out the four card game? 
you got to teach me, man. I, I have never, I can, I can, I can say definitively, I've never played PLO largely because oh. I'm, I'm a little bit scared, a little bit, a little bit trepidatious. Uh, I watched the Gus Hansen uh, PLO <laughs> session last week. That that did not do anything to to help my fear of the situation. That dude's a madman. But yeah, I would love to get involved at some point down the road. Are there any more plans to to increase the amount of pot in Omaha coverage being shown on Poke Go? I think so. Uh, I mean, heading into the summer, we there's a, there's a plethora of, of mixed game events that we're planning to show uh, throughout the World Series, and then for Poker After Dark as well. the The mixed games event was a big one during U.S. Poker Open that we that we broadcast. I think I tweeted about it at the time, but until that event, there there wasn't graphics for mixed games that existed for draw games especially. And so we had a team working it seemingly day in and day out on putting graphics together that worked for mixed games events and they, they got it working and not only did they get it to work, but they got it to stay working throughout the course of that event, which was awesome. So that opens up a lot of doors for us and what we can do with different types of events for both, you know, weekly regular events like poker after dark, but then for streaming events as well, like the poker players championship. So all of that's on the table. Yeah, I think I've talked with a lot of companies out there with the poker tables, and some of them say they can't they can't do mixed games because the whole card couldn't read it and those type of things. So yeah, I feel like this is one of the first time. I mean, I think there were s some mixed games back in the day though on, on ESPN, I believe they may have showed some of those, like the player the the, the poker players championship. I think, but that might have been Nolan Holden final table. So, but yeah, they used to, they had some back in the day, right? They had like the seven card stud and those kind of things on television. Yeah, it's just it's draw games are different, as I understand with um, with the RFID. We think and and, and then too, it, it it's it depends on if you're looking at a whole whole card cam versus RFID. And if you think oh, about right. true, if, you, true, if you think yeah. if you think about just the right. the uh, the mechanics that went RFID and putting your cards in one place and then giving the, giving a few back to the dealer and then having to bring in new cards and how the system reads that it gets a little bit funky, but. The, the geniuses we have in the back, as I, we, we talked about the, 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 the minds that go into creating even a day of poker after dark, those geniuses, uh, Kelly Lewis is the guy, shout out to him on the poker productions crew who puts everything together, uh, made it happen, which was really cool to see. Can people come tour the, the studio if they want to, where, the, where people play poker after dark now? Because I hear, I get a lot of people that say, can you go? Can they show me where where they play at? Can do you let people in there, kind of check it yeah, out? Yeah, I mean, and, we I, it's 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 a live set area, so it's not like you can mid poker after dark go in and you know be behind and go behind the bar and hang out mm -hmm. there. But it's a, it's a live gaming area, so we are not only can you come, but we're not allowed to tell you you can't come. So the the area the space is that area. It's it's tucked it's tucked away by North LA. If you want to stop by, I can't say that I'll be there myself, but typically if you poke your head in, there'll be the if if it's a live production, especially you'll see all the crew there and you're free to stop in and, and watch for a little bit and, and then dip out whenever you see fit. Archer had another question. He said, how about spending some advertising money on giving away some event packages to subscribers of your service? Rewarding good behavior in a way. Have a normal person playing in a big event like the main. And he guarantees you, Sam, other normal people will be attached to that story. You, you, you have a very astute audience as a lot of the things that are coming up are things that have yet to be announced or may be on the uh -huh. horizon. So I don't want to get too much into details there, but we would love to involve our, our lovely subscribers in uh, all of the events that we show on PokerGo. Yeah, it sounds like a fun idea. Obviously, kind of it 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 um it gives people more of an incentive to want to subscribe to because they could potentially enter some sort of chance to play the main event or play you know in a cash game or something like that. Obviously, we've seen the the Poker Stars big game that they had in the past where they bring in that loose cannon as and that's an added value I believe that they give to people that play on the dot com software. But that could be mm -hmm. something cool where if you're a subscriber, you potentially get chosen or you you can have a chance to win. An opportunity to play in, in a cash game with with some people that they know, like in a or, or whoever. Yeah, I mean that's that's something. It's a model that's worked. If you there's a few poker after dark weeks from the older shows, like Dream Week, where someone comes in and picks their favorite five players and they play against them in in a sit and go. Um, there's been, I mean, plenty of instances. So it's so. Did I did I freeze? Is it frozen, guys? It might be frozen. We might have to give a shout out. Hold on a second. I think it's frozen on Sam's end. He died. They shut him down. He was giving away too many secrets. I guess I'll get some shout outs here until if we get Sam back here. Who we got in the chat, man? We got bar poker open out there. What's up, guys? Bar poker. Oh, Sam, you're back. You're back? You're back. Yeah. Who froze? Okay. Me or you? 
I, I must have been me because I, I was still I could still see you and I could still see myself. So it must have been on my end. Oh, I was good. Okay. All right. uh, anyways, I was just just to wrap things up. Contests, legal aspects are such a pain in the ass with like sweepstakes and whatnot. So there's certain intricacies that go into like, can we, can you buy someone into a poker tournament as a reward and how that transfer works? But we spent a lot of time ironing it out with some uh, very smart attorneys that know a lot more than I do. And we, we found some good solutions. So the, some of that stuff is, is to come in the, uh, in the somewhat near future. Cool. That'll be pretty fun to watch out there. You want to get some shout outs? You want to have anybody, anybody watching? You might want yeah, to I don't know who's watching. I know my mom's watching, I think. I sent her the link. Uh, I don't know if she's going to be in the chat right now, but hey, mom, love you. Um, and besides that, I'm, I'm, sure my, I'm sure the office out here is watching. Uh, I'll, I'll say Brent, Carly, Will, who are, who are club cubicles out here are probably watching. Morgan's out here, I think. She might be watching. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, anyone else. Feel free to shoot me a text and I'll give you a shout out. Let me get some shout outs, man. We got bar poker open out here. Bar poker open. You ever met the bar poker open guys? You ever heard of them, Sam? I've, I've heard of them. I have not met them, but I would love to if they would want to meet me. Well, they'll be out here in Vegas. They have their big Vegas, uh, Vegas main event. They have one in New Jersey and then they have one in Vegas. I can think they, the guarantees. Can, can they, can they keep up with one of our nights out? Uh, no, there's not a fucking chance. No, no. The, I mean, actually I've been out with them a couple times. I don't know. Maybe, may, actually, maybe. There's only, there's only one way to find out. Actually, maybe. I mean, I don't know, man. The night outs here, and the nights out here, and in Miami are are <laughs> some, whatever, man. They're crazy out there. Who else is out there right now, man? Chip Extractor. What's up, Chip Extractor? What's going on? Power Logic X. What's up, Mister Power Logic X? Poppy Ridge Runner. Just is that big Poppy Jonah the Hungry Man's out there right now? Looks hey, like Jonah. Looking... I, I I should have given you a shout out too. I I now have the chat open. Hey. Big Joan is looking for a meal. We got Big J out there. Ball Balky. What's up, Ball Balky? 1986. What's happening, man? Always good to see you in the chat. Kyle Hayes as well. We got some guy trying to sell Adderall in the chat. Uh, what's up, my young salesman friend? That might be Rich on his multi account. Uh, <laughs> trying to make a little, trying to, try to push some sales stuff. Logan Shoop. What's up, Logan? What's hey, happening? I see, I, see a, I see a question here I want to answer. Uh, yeah. Where is it? It's I think it's Chip Extractor. Uh, just curious as a company, you are open to outside productions bringing content to you, or are you focused on self produced content? both are on the table and for anyone in the chat please please don't abuse me by me sharing this but my email is sam at pokercentral.com please do send any ideas my way that you may have i and i already feel like i'm going to regret telling the group that all right guys you heard him go send him emails right now I, we're, we're very transparent you I, guys uh, just you guys just heard him right now he said send you what send him what you have in your mind what have i done anything on your mind just go ahead feel free to send them let's say a couple more questions from the chat out here guys chris p clioco three three two two what's up big poppy what's happening bd shout out siberian remco who is that supposed to be shout out to beyond beyond tells crew i like that beyond tells blake eastman great dude what happens sam when you go when you go past tells you're on you're on you're on the seventh level and that's that's not a place i've ever been Exactly. You go beyond tells. I agree. You go beyond tells. Shout out to beyond tells. When there's tells and you go beyond tells, it's like the next level of that guy, the FBI agent, Joe Navarro, that they always just put on ESPN when he broke down people's body language and stuff like that. So That's right. Now he's the guy that's, that just tweets political stuff on Twitter. <laughs> I don't follow him anymore. I don't, I don't know if he's in <laughs> post poker or not. So I feel like there was a lot of guys like that that used to be in poker. Now they're kind of out of poker and you don't really see him too much of them. So <laughs> All right, I'm looking for. I'm looking for. Anyway, as, as another question out there, I guess what's like the what's the anything to look out for coming up here very soon? So we got to find the VPN for uh, the Chinese super high rollerball to watch that. The yeah, lottery's I mean, coming. The lottery's coming up too, right? Lottery. lottery what date's that? That's next next Wednesday, the 21st. We have Poker After Dark tonight, uh, headlined by Don Cheadle and Jennifer Tilly. Uh, Randall Emmett joins the party as well. He was quite the uh, the boisterous one last night, so he might break out the megaphone again. So we'll see what happens. Next week we have we have Poker After Dark Tuesday Wednesday next week we I, we have not announced lineups yet but we have some pretty big names expected to uh, come out for that one we're going to confirm with with Brent on that and the uh, actually probably right after this uh, little session and we'll uh, hopefully announce that next day or two so look out for that and then gearing up for Super Pie Roller Bowl beyond that you, you know gets our biggest event of the year and got the lottery on Wednesday and then from there it's uh, things pick up steam real quick heading into that in the World Series should be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. I feel like we had a very slow, you know, December and, and January kind of slow times in poker and, and you look around and you say what's happening out there. We had PCA, but no, I don't know. PCA kind of 
maybe makes a comeback next year. We'll kind of see what happens. So I'm definitely excited to see what comes up here. Obviously, Super Hot Rollable, I'm pumped up to watch that. I'm kind of I'm excited to see the lottery because it's always curious to see who gets in and, and who gets to play that 300K event. And there's only a limited number of seats. So there's people going to be unhappy. Um, there'll definitely be people unhappy it's, every yeah. year for that. I mean, that's, that's, that's the nature of the beast. And I think one of the, one of the dynamics we set up early on and is important to us is, is, is the supply and demand aspect. And having, having limited seats kind of kicks poker players in the rear and gets them on board and signed up earlier than later. And for our business purposes, it lets us, it, we can, we can promote around that. We can promote the, the biggest names in, in the community, which is, which is valuable to be able to do that for two months. Uh, P. Mars South says, how do, how do they think that allowing players to use megaphones at the table will be good for viewership? One player already stated that he will walk if the megaphones continued, but has remained on the table. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that have a lot of thoughts about that. Um, we, uh, I, I would venture to say that we will not see the megaphone tonight. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, Randall last night. By the way, Randall last night, we were playing, um, we were playing Potlum Omaha, I think, very late last night, and there were some drinks involved too, so I hope Randall is... I hope Randall is awake and sober today and ready to win back the money he lost last night. So. Or I or I hope he's awake and not sober. That could be fun too. I hope he shows up. I mean, I sometimes, not... sometimes if you're not feeling so hot, you gotta you gotta you know have some hair of the dog to stave things off. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe you should have a drunken uh, 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 episode of Poker After Dark where everyone's drinking. That's that sounds like a liability to bring a bunch of people, put them in a room, and say. Now drink a bunch of alcohol, but if they want to do it themselves, then they're more than welcome to. And I will say that that bar next to the Poker After Dark set is that's actually real alcohol, as you know from being there. Mm -hmm. But there was there was a session where Justin Young and, and Danielle Moon were doing props on who would drink the rest of the bottle. And there's one bottle that's gone thanks to Justin Young and Danielle, but the rest are still there. So that's uh, very much at their disposal. I think everyone should get together and, and, and agree to drink for one episode. I think that'd be. What, what are we doing your week? <laughs> I don't know. Enough for what? <laughs> if you, we'll, we'll put together a PLO lineup and, and everyone in the chat, press press one if you want a poppy lineup. Poppy um, week of Poker After Dark. Y'all going to give me all the best. Y'all going to give me like the, the top PLO play. I want the Antonio we're lineup. Bring, you, we're, bring, we're bringing you, we're bringing you Galfond. <laughs> we're going to bring you. Uh, Mike, Mike Gordinsky. I, 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 I can't pronounce the last name. Perfect. All, all the PLO crushers, and that's Perfect. that's gonna be your week. You're, awesome. you're the best of the best. You can compete no, at that level. I'm definitely not the best of the best. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> the best of the best. That is for sure. And uh, I certainly have not been playing as much as I have in the years past. So I need like. We we'll need Gus, Gus on we'll the show. Gus we'll bring a Gus Hansen. We need Gus Hansen on the show. We need Luce Leon on the show. We need to get Isler on the show. We need Rob Young on the show. We can get him on there. We need we need guys like, like Antonio. Those guys Antonio got, and I know he knows those guys. But I'll go meet the guys too, and we'll give up. We'll bring. I'll get Randall in the game. Well, we I can put together a, a good PLO lineup that's not consisted of of tight nitty players who are just waiting to waiting to play GTO at the game. We'll we'll be in touch. We'll we'll talk lineups. If you if you if you bring the team, we'll make it happen. I don't want. I don't want Brent texting me a PLO lineup like he did a couple weeks ago. He's like, "You want to play in this game?" I didn't see Gus Hansen on that list, Brent. Okay, if Brent, I see Gus Hansen on the list. <laughs> I'm thinking about maybe joining the game. Shout out to my guy Gus. Podcast coming up with him. So yeah, that was that was a last minute ad, and I uh, hopefully we'll have some some uh, further notice next time. Yeah, hopefully. I, I could just on, a, on, a, on just on a side regarding the lineups, and I don't want to share too much because that's a conversation to have with Brent, but. You guys don't understand how last minute some of this stuff is. There literally have been mornings where we don't know who's going to play on poker after dark that day, and we pull it together at the last minute. And it's it's it always it always works out, but it's it's it can get hectic at times. So, I, as much as I want to, as much as we want to put forth a lineup of Phil Ivy, Tom Dewan, Isolder, Gus Hansen, uh, Patrick Antonius, and Dan Negreanu, it's just hard to do that week after week. Yeah. Definitely makes sense. I can understand that. I'm sure I, I, I deal with some of these divas sometimes and uh, I don't know, man, they get my, I don't want to play. They get moody. They're texting you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't fucking know. I'm sure it's it tough and it's nothing, nothing kills the vibe more than a losing night. It's hard to do the back to back days. It's hard to know. Sometimes there are, uh, there are people that don't necessarily want to come back. Yeah. David Benjamin, we need him on the show for sure. He just played on live with the bike recently. David Benjamin is a legend. Brent, add him to the list. And I'm going to list Brent. Brent's got this master list. Sometimes uh, people message me. They say, hey, can you get me on Polka After Dark? I just put him in touch with Brent. And then Brent's got the master list of about 10,000 names there. And then he just tries to make it work. So 
I don't. I see. I, don't I see a question. Uh, sponsors allowed? Yeah, that's we don't we don't care. Everything's allowed so far. Oh, people can wear patches, whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't. I mean, if unless, until there's. I mean, of course, I don't want to say that on the record definitively. There, if there's, there could be certain things that people want to wear that maybe don't conflict with our values or something else. We'd have that conversation later. But as far as the usual patches go in poker, there's no issues. All right, guys. Last chance. Last chance, or forever hold your peace. Ori, I just can email Sam, and Sam's going to be answering. Yeah, now, all the now you can. Yeah, you can berate me. I have I have my emails popping up on my computer right here, and I haven't gotten one yet. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how many we get. Sam at PokerCentral.com, right? Thanks for reminding them. Okay, Sam at PokerCentral.com. Please send him something in line, though, guys. Don't get hey, too I like, out of line. I, I like this comment. Joey plus Adderall is greater than Isildur. Is that true? Is that confirmed? I don't know. Maybe. There's only one way to find out. Only Brent, one way to find Brent, out. Okay. What if Isildur is on Adderall too? That could be a bad thing. I don't know. Ah, I don't know. That could be. I think. Like a lot of stare downs. Yeah. Uh, P. Marcel says, cheers for the answer, guys. Was pretty brutal to try to watch a couple of recent episodes. Obviously, the Gus episodes were great. Yeah, man, we we get it. We're uh, you know we're on, always improving. We appreciate the feedback from you guys. Please do keep it coming. Uh, you know, we 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 do the best we can with putting these things together. Amen, guys. If you want to check it out, uh, check out the podcast. You can find it on Poker Life Podcast on iTunes or watch this back. Sam's on Twitter at Sampson Sampson Simmons. Right? Sampson Simmons. That's my full name. S A M P S O N. Simmons. S I M M O N S. It's a real mouthful, not for someone with a lisp. Your mom gave you a throwback name, Samson, huh? She she thought she did. She thought it's, she thought it's throw, or something like that. Throwback Thursday every day. Actually, fun fact: my great great I don't know how many greats grandfather was a Civil War general, and his name was Samson Simmons. That's my namesake. It is actually an oldest shit name. Yeah, it make it makes sense. I can Samson. I don't know any other Samson, so I, that's a unique name too. At that, <laughs> that's that is true. I feel I, I should I don't even want to call you Sam. I just want to call you Samson in front. Samson he didn't grow his hair. I've heard I've heard that joke. Although Samson in that in that story is S A M S O N. So the P has a little flavor in there. And I've also heard, I have not seen the movie, but there's a line in Half Baked where he says, I want to talk to Samson or let me talk to Samson. And that's something I get a lot too, for those that get that reference. So two 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 references have been made to your name in in, in the last hundred years. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's it was it was my 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 grandfather, Civil War general, and then it didn't resurface until the stoner cold classic half baked. Wow. I mean, we all we all got our thing with our name, man. Uh, my name uh, my name's Simple Joey. A lot of Joey's out there. Samson sounds like a much more unique tale. I kind of want to <laughs> research the name Samson now. I don't know. I feel like I'm missing out on some Samson gold. Again, gonna... buddy, I want to say it means like sun or something. Sun is in the one in the sky. So I'm a, I've I've got a bright future. You do have a bright future, kid, man. People on chat, and, and, and the answer is he was he was a general in the south, and I'm not responsible for that. Tim, have you done live streams before with a chat? I can tell. I can tell you. You. I can no, tell you like I, the comments. I haven't. I have not done one of these. I, Are you, uh, I you, not, you, now you're my, maybe you might want to consider it. It's kind of it's kind of fun. My, by the way, my, same time next week. You have you have to hit your two podcast quota. So whenever you need someone to fill some time, go ahead and give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, might, I never know with me sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, I might just. I might just forget. Uh, I think also, guys, uh, like I said, we're having Gus Hansen on the podcast, but it might not be live. We might just record it, and then I'll put it up at a on a different date. I think Jason Moe's next Monday. You guys know Jay Moe's always talking shit about someone, so that'll be next Monday as well. And then, uh, yeah, follow Sam on Twitter. You want people to follow you on Instagram, Sam? Do you want? You don't need to like, post Sure, either way. Same. It's the same handle. Is it really Samson on Instagram, too? Samson Simmons, yep. Is it really true? Oh, yeah. Consistency is key. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very inconsistent with my... Um, with my well, you also have an avatar that's not even you. <laughs> so, what do you mean? What's wrong with that? What is, what is, that's a good question. What, like, what does that mean to you? Like, when you change your avatar, what compels you to do that? Um, that's a great question. I'm glad. I don't know. Usually, I just get. I try to cycle through different avatars and mix it up, without getting too much strategic about it. I do feel like there is some like repetitiveness and it, get, it might get might wore people out sometimes and if sometimes if people are don't engage with you on social media they don't check for your stuff on instagram or twitter but then you might switch up your avatar to something more appealing whether it's not your face or something else i, I feel that it might bring back people in and then also it might catch the attention a little bit more for people who might already be like sort of autopiloting paying attention to you 
And then they might be inclined to want to take a deeper look into exactly what the photo is and try to figure out the meaning. And then once they do that, they might start to engage with actually what you do or what you post or whether it's on Twitter or Instagram. And um, I don't know, I just like to be a little bit unique with it too, rather than That's just fair. have a picture of my face all the time. That's fair. I can say that there's been times I've, I've gone to look at your profile and it's hard to find because it'll be the different person's face. And then sometimes you do the funky thing where you change your your Twitter name to something that's some some hot button inside joke, something that's relevant to whatever you're doing on that given day. And then I can't, I can't, I just want to search your name. Is yeah. that so hard? Yeah. But I, just, I eventually track you down. I make them, I make the, I make the people deal with it out there, man. I just gotta, I gotta make them deal with it. What are these comments are guys? All right, we're wrapping it up, man. If you guys have any, uh, if you guys have any, anything else, put it, uh, send it to us on Twitter. Be back tomorrow at about the same time with this young, young Twitch streamer who did 125 days in a row, Arlie Shaban. He is, I'm very excited for people to get to meet him. I think he's a, a guy who's got a bright future in poker as well too. Sam, thank you for coming on, my friend. We'll chat soon. Thanks for having me and thanks for everyone for tuning in. All right, guys. Adios. Peace out. Much love. Make sure you guys get your, get your hat, man. Take care.